Hello again everyone. In my last video we made some diethyl ether. In this video we'll be using the ether we made to do an extraction of vanillin from cheap store-bought artificial vanilla extract. Remember ether is very flammable so do this extraction outside or in a fume hood. To begin you'll need a set funnel and artificial vanilla. I'm using a 1 liter set funnel and I bought the 500 milliliters of artificial vanilla extract from a grocery store for about two dollars. Be sure you get the really cheap artificial stuff and not the expensive vanilla extract. This is one case where the cheap stuff gives more pure product and the real vanilla extract would give an impure product due to all the other molecules that were extracted from the bean with the vanillin. Begin by attaching your set funnel to a stand with either a ring or a clamp. To the set funnel, pour in your artificial vanilla extract, then add 120 milliliters of diethyl ether and stopper the top. Now pull the set funnel off the stand and begin to shake it vigorously, venting very often. After shaking for about a minute, place the set funnel back on the stand and let the layer separate. You may notice that the ether layer on the top has reduced in volume. This is because ether is very slightly soluble in water. Now remove the bottom aqueous layer into a clean beaker. Pour the ether layer into a bottle or something with a lid to keep the ether vapors to a minimum. Reattach the set funnel and pour back in the aqueous layer. Then add a fresh 120 milliliters of ether and do the whole process over. You'll need to repeat this at least four times using fresh ether each time. Placing all the ether in a sap and doing one big extraction may seem like a good idea. However, you'll end up with much less vanillin if you do this due to solubility equilibrium. Extractions always need to be done in multiples for maximum yield. When done, collect all the ether extractions in a suitable round bottom boiling flask. You may notice that the ether has a slight yellow tint to it. That's not a problem. Now set up for simple distillation. Be sure to use a long condenser and make sure the water is ice cold. See my video on making ether for how to distill it. Distill off the ether very slowly. Keep a close eye on everything and minimize any ignition sources. This is best done if outside. Remove all but about 10 milliliters of ether. Then pour the 10 milliliters in a small beaker and set aside to cool. The solution will have an oily look to it. I let mine sit overnight and the next day I found that the oil had crystallized. This is not a problem. We now need to recrystallize the vanillin to remove any impurities. Place a small beaker with 120 milliliters of water on a hot plate and bring it to 80 degrees C. Switch the beakers and then add some of the water to the beaker with the vanillin. Begin stirring. Slowly add more and more hot water until all the vanillin has dissolved. Let stir for a few minutes. When done, set aside to cool. Once cooled to room temperature, take the beaker and place it in an ice bath. In about 20 minutes, crystals should start to form. Now we need to filter and wash the crystals with water. Set up for vacuum filtration and slowly add in your crystals. Once they've all been added, wash them with copious amounts of very cold water. When done, pull the filter and scrape the crystals onto a watch glass to dry. Let dry overnight and you should be left with white to light yellow needle-like crystals of vanillin. So how do we know this really is vanillin without using expensive lab analysis equipment? Well, we can confirm with reasonable satisfaction that this is vanillin by its physical properties. To begin, it most definitely smells like vanilla. Vanillin is the key component in vanilla that gives its characteristic odor. Its appearance is of needle-like crystals. Here they are under a microscope. These two things alone are great indicators that this is vanillin. Well, how pure is it? Well, that's a little harder to tell by smell and sight, so we need to check another physical property, its melting point. 
This is a metal temp apparatus. It measures the melting point of organic compounds by heating them in small tubes. It has a very small window that you can watch your compound through and then a thermometer so you can read the temp. You turn on the device and slowly heat the compound while watching it through the window. When it starts to melt, you look at the thermometer and note the temp. You then look back through the window and watch for when everything is melted and then note that temp. You can then compare your melting point range to the published ranges. If they match up, your compound is reasonably pure. How large the range is can also tell you how pure your compound is. If it has a 6 to 7 degree melting point range, it probably is not very pure. If the compound melts at a lower temperature than the published values, it could also be impure. I should also note that if the compound is not perfectly dry, it will show up as impure. When I ran my sample, I got 79 to 81 degrees. The published range is 80 to 81, so I would consider this reasonably pure. Be sure to bottle the vanillin in an airtight container and store in a cool, dark place to keep it from oxidizing. I hope this has all been helpful, and thanks for watching.